Hmm. Something is different, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Oh, wait a sec. Yeah, I can. <music> Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, this is going to be part three, or well, probably more like part two and a half of my room tour series. Uh, I've done two chapters. Uh, last one was quite a while ago, but really not a whole lot has changed uh, since that last one. Uh, that's why this is, I kind, kind of call this one my part two and a half. Uh, I'm just going to show you the couple things that have changed. One of them uh, you can see right behind me, this amazing new custom designed and custom built record cabinet, uh, designed and built by my brother, and made from entirely or almost entirely from recycled, repurposed building materials. So yeah, this cabinet is stuff that used to be other stuff. Amazing, huh? Uh, yes, my brother is amazing, and I will show you this cabinet in painstaking detail in just a couple of minutes here. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to kind of do a little backstory, a recap, if you will, of why this is here and how this came to be. So. Uh, as you recall, or if you recall, in all the videos up until now, uh, the bookcase or the uh, record cabinet you'd seen behind me was actually a bookcase. And as you could see, it was uh, getting pretty full. There was not much room left on it. Uh, that's one reason why I needed uh, a bigger record cabinet and one made specifically for, specifically for records. Uh, but the other reason is uh, that cabinet was originally a bookcase and not a record cabinet. And as such, there were a couple of things about it that made it not optimal for records. Uh, for one thing, the shelf span was, what I don't know, 30 or 32 inches, which is a little too long for records, ideally. Uh, record shelving should only be about 12, maybe 18 inches wide, uh, just because records are kind of heavy. And, you know, unless your shelves are packed, you know, uh, filled pretty much packed, which they shouldn't be, by the way. Records need a little bit of room to breathe and to flip through, by the way. Um, you're going to have some records that lean, and the more records that lean to one side, the more pressure they put on the records at the outer edge. And so that's not good, because excessive record pressure causes warping. And another reason why that cabinet was not good was, uh, not good for records, was because as a bookcase, the uh, trim on the outer edges of the bookcase hung in from the wall of the bookcase by about an inch or three quarters of an inch. So, as you can see in the picture I'm about to show you here, uh, the records at the very outer edge, uh, you know, the cabinet was, records are obviously 12 inches deep, but the cabinet was only about 10 inches deep. So as you could see, that trim that hangs in was pushing against the corners of the record jackets, you know, pushing inward against the corners of the record jackets, and the record jackets are leaning outward. So. Hopefully I have not ended up with any, uh, actually I didn't, I was able to check the records as I was reshelving them, did not end up with any uh, significant damage to any of the record jackets, and hopefully none of the records came out of their uh, couple of years on that shelf with uh, any excessive warping. I tried to stack the records on the outer edge as vertically as possible. That's a good way to prevent the excess pressure and to prevent warping, is to make sure that they're stacked vertically, you know, and the ones in the middle can lean a little bit because nothing else is leaning against them, so they're not really getting pressure on them. You know, yay physics. Anyway, uh, so yeah, um, and now my records are on a nice new home on a cabinet that is built for records. Uh, I will show you the cabinet in detail in just a couple minutes, as I think I just mentioned. Uh, but uh, yeah, and after that, oh, uh, speaking of shelving that was made specifically, specifically for records, um, Three, four months ago, it might have even been as long as six months ago, I had told you guys that my record shelving situation was going to be changing in a couple of weeks. Uh, obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, the deal with that was I had found a couple of uh, shelving units at a St. Vincent de Paul thrift store that were, they're kind of like the Ikea Collax record shelving, but they were a little bit different. Actually, they might have been Collax, I can't remember. But... Uh, I, we were all set to go and buy them, and my brother took one look at them. My brother has been working in, uh, you know, woodworking and construction and building materials ever since he graduated high school, so 40 plus years, uh, oh, 35, something like that. Anyway, and so he can take one look, one look at something and see whether or not it's garbage. And he said that those shelves were garbage; they were not uh, 
not heavy duty, they wouldn't stand up to the weight of records, or they might have, but he would have needed, needed to have done so much reinforcing to them that, you know, by the time you're starting to get into that much work, uh, he, he felt, you know, why not make, you know, build something from scratch himself. So, so he did, and uh, here we have it. Uh, and this thing got here way faster than I thought it would. Um, I thought I was going to have to wait uh, until the end of summer, beginning of fall, before I saw this record cabinet. But uh, one thing I realized that kind of, uh, well, it's because he usually has quite a few irons in the fire, so to speak, aside from his paying job. You know, this this kind of stuff he does on the weekends or in his spare time. So that's one reason why I did not expect it to happen very quickly. But uh, I decided, I realized kind of the secret to uh, getting things going with him is one thing that motivates him is if he can exercise his creativity uh, and his design, uh, the design part of his brain, because he actually originally started studying after he went uh, left high school, he started studying to be an architect. But uh, he realized fairly soon, fairly soon that as much as he likes designing, that uh, he got the most satisfaction from the hands-on actual construction work. So uh, that's that story, his little, a little biography of my brother. Um, so yeah, and he was able to, uh, this kind of pushed him along is when I, you know, he got a little creative, creative license, a little design uh, uh, input of his own. And here we have this record. So uh, uh, the record cabinet, sorry. So I'm checking my notes to make sure I don't forget to say anything. I recorded this video once and forgot to say a couple things, so I'm recording it again. Uh, but yeah, as I said, designed and built by my brother and uh, built almost entirely from uh, recycled or repurposed hardware, uh, building materials, uh, the wood and stuff here. So it's, it, the wood comes from several different cabinets, uh, and I think it's a, a couple of different kinds of wood and a couple of different species of wood. Uh, and yeah, he brought home a couple of cabinets that looked like they reminded me of, you know, the wardrobe cabinets that they have in Europe and the UK. You know, here in America and North America, we have closets that are actually built into our house, houses. But over there, they have standalone wood cabinets that are, you know, for their clothes. So that's kind of what they reminded me of. But yeah, it was kind of amazing to see the process of him breaking down those old, completely different things and making this new thing. And, you know, it has a nice little coat of... Uh, uh, semi-gloss black on it, and uh, it just looks fantastic, amazing. Uh, again, you will see, actually, let's go ahead and roll the um, the clip here of the close-up tour, if you will, of my, record my new record shelving and a little extra thing that he also worked on. So check it out. Okay, so this is my new record cabinet in all its glory, uh, filled up with records and uh, looking like it's right at home, feeling right at home. And yeah, I'm going to show you in detail from the ground up uh, just how good my brother does. He doesn't just slap some boxes together, throw some paint on it, and call it good. He does finish details, like look at this uh, trim, or the, the, the base down at the bottom. It's uh, beveled or rounded along the entire thing, you know, built fresh up to the wall, flush up to the wall. And uh, yeah, he decided... For the height that we wanted the shelf to be, um, it was best that he do two shelves for records and one shelf for CDs. Uh, I was going to put uh, just regular CDs on it, and my brother was going to put some drawers in it so we could put, you know, since it's 12 inches deep, we'd have plenty of depth for a bunch of CDs. But I thought about putting my box sets on there, and it's, I think they look good as uh, kind of displayed on there. And then, so yeah, that's... Uh, and uh, down here at the bottom where I have this green and white box is for uh, my 45s. And uh, there's a power outlet back there. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, he cut a, a, a hole out for the power outlet so we wouldn't lose it. And then at the midpoint between the two sections, look at this uh, butcher block countertop that he put on here. And yes, uh, sanded wonderfully smooth with those nice, beautiful rounded corners on it and uh, at least two coats of uh, lacquer or varnish on it. So it just makes the color in it pop, and it's just I just think it's gorgeous. Uh, just a fantastic uh, contrast between, you know, from the black. And then here, you know, uh, on the, the upper section, uh, as you can see, it is not just the plain old boxes perpendicular to the wall. He built these at a 45-degree angle, uh, alternating angles, and... 
Since the cabinet is black and the lighting is not fantastic, you may not be able to see great detail, but each row, each of the three rows alternates between 45 degree angles. So yeah, plenty of room for all sorts of records. And uh, up here in the middle, there's a little uh, cubby hole that I might be able to put something in there for, for display or maybe, maybe a light, possibly. And then of course, on the other side, we got the uh, space for the light, uh, cut out for the light. And yeah, that looks a little messy, but he's going to finish that up later, uh, uh, neaten it up later. And then up at the very top is another little cubby for something. And yeah, this, the top of it here, uh, it's probably not tall enough to put anything significant up there. Maybe, I mean, hey, I've got lots of time to play with the uh, uh, arrangement of stuff, and uh, maybe something will find its way up there. And yeah, again, on the top, you see the uh, the detail. It's not just a plain old top that's flush with the rest of the thing. It's, it's It stands out, you know, juts out a little bit. And uh, yeah, just... His craftsmanship is just fantastic. I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to buy as good a uh, store-bought piece of furniture like this. And he custom-built it. So, uh, yes, I am incredibly happy with this. Uh, so, yeah, on the uh, the bottom section, uh, the, uh, as for the records, the way the records are arranged, it's basically the same way I arrange my CDs. Um, I have stuff with vocals and then stuff without vocals. All the genres of vocal-based music rock, pop, country, I don't think I have any hip-hop vinyl, but soul and all that stuff, you know, arranged from A to Z by artist, starting with that top left cubicle right here. It's only uh, mostly empty just because that's the way it ended up when I rearrange things. I'll fill, fill it out later, or, or even it out later. And then, yeah, when the A to Z vocal section ends, the A to Z non-vocal stuff ends. And down there by where my... Uh, Box of 45s is, is a bunch of little miscellaneous stuff, odd-sized, you know, 10-inch records and a few other uh, miscellaneous things. And, uh, yeah, to get the uh, A to Z to start here, I actually had to move the comedy and soundtracks up to the bottom tier of the top section. Uh, so, yeah, I've got comedy in the left-hand pocket here and then soundtracks in the right. And then everything on the two... Uh, tiers up above is stuff I haven't listened to yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm that behind in uh, listening to music. And I decided to sort these uh, before in the old uh, bookcase. They were not sorted. They were just all stuffed onto the top shelf. Uh, but I ordered, I organized them into genres approximately. So yeah, I've got uh, kind of, well, on the right hand tier is stuff that's uh, uh, various artist stuff, and then a special section uh, that I have separate for for reasons. Uh, but everything else is kind of basically by era. So up here at the top, I've got the 50s and stuff and some comedy. And then moving down to like 60s and 70s and 80s and onward here. And these two that are here in this uh, tier, that's where I'm putting the stuff I have not cleaned yet. The vinyl records I still need to clean before I put them in their proper place. So, uh, yeah. Uh, needless to say, I'm pretty darn happy with this. And uh, as a special little bonus uh, of putting the... Uh, box sets here, my CD box sets. Actually, there is a cassette box set down there too, the Springsteen. Uh, I was able to clear those off of these two shelves down here, which I guess I'll just ex uh, have room to expand my uh, compilations section. That's what's in this uh, tall, skinny cabinet. And also on this section, uh, you might recall that these used to be just uh, three shelves, uh, or, you know, you three rows tall. But uh, my brother decided to cut, uh, or actually I asked him to, cut a new, pair, a new pair of shelves. And they are out in his shop uh, with the coat of stain drying on them today. But uh, otherwise they would be here and the shelves would be uh, restacked with my CDs. But yeah, my uh, soundtracks and holiday music uh, needed a little, mo little bit more room that was uh, starting to overflow. So yeah, and we thought he was going to have to... Uh, specially position the shelves uh, and fix them in, you know, uh, with nails or screws. But actually, the shelf peg holes are in the right spot to uh, evenly space the uh, shelves out. So as soon as the two shelves are dry and in place, the rest of my uh, soundtracks and holiday CDs will be reshelved, and there will be a little bit more room to grow there, too. So, yeah, killed uh, a few birds with one stone, as it were. So, yeah, needless to say, my music room is... Uh, looking better and better, and I absolutely love this new addition to my shelving 
uh, system. So there you go. Isn't it amazing? Uh, it's my brother is a genius. Uh, he's, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find something like this, you know, you know, manufactured professionally and store bought. Not that he isn't professional. I mean, you know, look at the crafts, craftsmanship here. Uh, and by the way, the uh, thing you saw, or oh, actually, no, you will see in a little clip that's coming up in just a minute. Uh, there was a little black cabinet, and I, th I think I told you about it in a video. It was a four-section thing that was hinged together. It was made for CDs, and you could you could either unfold it so that it was, you know, four columns all facing the same direction that you could put CDs in, or you could uh, swing it closed, you know, box it closed, so that it was a uh, uh, square shaped so that you could have one column of CDs on each of the four sides. Anyway, that used to be sitting right here, and uh, that was the perfect size for me to have my drink on. Got a little drink coaster here. And so uh, that, of course, went away because this was made specifically long enough for this length of wall, so I could still have room for my bed <laughs> and oh, and my display cabinet. Uh, so that's one reason why he put the shelf here at this, this height. And yes, I put my drink on it uh, when I'm watching TV or movies uh, at night and stuff and relaxing in my easy chair. So, so yeah, that cabinet uh, went bye-bye. I was going to use it and might still use it at some point for something, for CDs maybe. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I won't be surprised to, uh, and won't be heartbroken, let's put it that way, if it does eventually just go away. And uh, so it was an interesting idea at the time, but so. And oh, and another reason for this shelf is, which I didn't think of until I was setting up for this video, perfect height for displaying uh, record albums or CDs if I that I end up talking about in the video. So uh, this is just kind of an experimental thing. I'm thinking about maybe putting like a 14 by 14 piece of black uh, cardboard or construction paper or something and, uh, you know, having just having a little thing to frame the record album so it's a little easier to see without this other stuff you know, right there next to it. It's, it kind of blends in. It's hard to see here. But anyway, I'll have lots of time to fiddle around with the setup here. And uh, so, yeah, anyway, needless to say, before I continue rambling on to death, uh, I am pleased it's as punch. This was one of the best weekends of my year so far. I could have said it's, it's probably, it'll be hard to beat this weekend, but I've got a weekend coming up in May that might be pretty fun. And uh, you guys will probably see uh, see what that's about uh, when the time comes. But anyway, yes, a fantastic weekend. I couldn't be happier with the uh, the new record shelving and with uh, my slightly more room on my CD shelving as well. Pardon me while I take the notes off of my uh, thing here. Uh, so yeah. Uh, oh, and before we go here, uh, before I sign off, I thought it would be neat uh, to show you a little time-lapse video of yesterday's uh, shenanigans from uh, unloading and tearing down the old cabinet all the way through the uh, uh, installation and setup and uh, mounting to the wall for safety, the new cabinet, and the reshelving also. I did all that. I just let my tablet, uh, set my tablet down there and uh, let it run for the day and used my uh, video editing software to make a time-lapse video. So I thought that would be a fun little extra. So enjoy! <laughs>
Well, I hope you enjoyed that little bonus extra. I guess that's uh, redundant, isn't it? Bonus extra. Uh, anyway, bonus extra treat of that time lapse music video. So I put some YouTube library music in there. With it. Oh, and the uh, cameo appearances by our cat Zot and by my brother, obviously, since he's the one that did all the the uh, hard work here. And my mother is the other person you saw uh, wandering into the frame a couple of times. So uh, that's my family. There you go. Anyway, uh, I guess that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.